Hello everyone and welcome to Doug's X5's Garage. Hey, as you guys know, I've started this channel a couple years ago and it was basically following me along with the modifications I was doing to the Buckshot X5. And through that process, I've had a lot of people hit me up on Instagram or in the YouTube comments asking me questions on how did I do this or what did I do to prevent that. So I thought, you know what, um, instead of answering them individually all the time, maybe I'd put together a series of Doug's X5 tech tips and what I've done to battle some problems that have been encountered. So today we're gonna start off with one common question and that is on the serpentine belt routing. And when you add horsepower to the engine, a common problem in torque is going to be belt slap. So you can see the thermostat housing right here has black marks from the belt hitting it. And you can see what I did to overcome that problem was installed this ICT billet bracket. Basically adding this extra idler pulley has solved that problem. Anytime you add more horsepower, you're gonna to wanna to strengthen up that belt line. Another problem when you add power is you may throw belts. Obviously, this is gonna help prevent throwing belts as we've shortened up the belt line. The other thing that's gonna help you prevent throwing belts is making sure you have high ridged pulleys. You'll look at the belt coming into the pulley and you'll notice you cannot see the belt above the top of the pulley which means it's sitting down deeply in the grooves of the pulley. Now, as an example, this is a shallow groove pulley. So when you take a look at this, look how the belt sticks up higher than the outer edges of the pulley. You do not want that. And if you just buy the specific part numbers from AutoZone, you're gonna get a cheaper built pulley than what was the GM original factory. Now, of course, when you change your pulleys, you may end up having to get a bigger diameter pulley that has a, a taller sidewall on it. And if you're gonna add additional idler pulleys, you're also gonna have to get a different size belt. So that's the next thing I'm gonna share with you is how do you measure very easily and quickly for the proper size belt. So in order to show you how I do it, I'm gonna remove this belt. Whenever you remove a belt, you wanna make sure you take a picture of how it's routed, so you make sure you get it rerouted correctly. All right, the best way to do this is with a fabric tape measure. Take the fabric tape measure and route it along your belt line. I don't know if you can see that, but we're at six foot nine inches. So that's 72 plus nine is 81. So that's an 81 inch belt, but our tensioner is not tight. So you wanna subtract a half an inch. So you want a belt that is 80 and a half inches. The belt I got is a 6PK2045. 85K6, so the K6 is how many ribs it has. And then we have 80 is the inches, uh, the five is to the nearest inch. So that's 80 and a half inches. And then the 6PK2045 is a six rib at 2,045 millimeters. Now we'll put the belt back on. After you reinstall your belt, just make sure it's properly inserted and in the grooves the right way. Now that we've got our new belt installed, we can take a look at the tensioner and we need to make sure that it's between these two lines. And you can see because it's a fresh belt, I have lots of stretch left. If I installed the wrong belt and it was too big, this would be lower than that line. And if it was too small, it would be above this line or you just wouldn't be able to get it installed. And that completes this tech tip for today. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, please give us a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next one.